Jaquel Crow is one of the youngest authors that we've had here, and she's written a fabulous new book. This changes everything from Halifax. Jaquel, uh, this is terrific to have you here at 100 Huntley Street. Thank you, Lorna. How is life in Halifax? It's pretty good, pretty good. Yep, pretty snowy still, but hopefully spring is coming. All right, okay. It is um, an amazing job to be able to write a, a book already at your age, but you've been blogging, you've been an online editor at The Revolution. You actually think there's a lot of information hitting teenagers that is got to be changed. Mm. What's what's how, how, why is that happening yeah. in you? Culture is hijacking the teen years. I really do believe that culture is trying to convince teenagers to find happiness in so many things that are not going to offer. Okay, sex like happiness. give us an example. Hijacking um, where? Fashion, school, sports, uh, sexuality, all these things. Truth. Um, culture is trying to convince teens that, that they have the market on those things, that teenagers want satisfaction in life, and culture is saying, these are the places that you can find that satisfaction. These are the things that are going to give you the eternal significance that you crave, and that is not true. What have been some sad stories that you've seen that you go, you know what, this is, as you call it, a hijack. Mm, yeah, young people, we hear a lot about leaving the church. Teenagers, they don't want any part in an organized system. Yeah, they, they get don't, bored. Exactly. Off they go. exactly. I don't and have I think, any friends there. I don't. Yeah. I think that's terribly sad because God has given the church as a family, and I think that's what teenagers so often miss: that the church is a body that loves each other and wants to care for each other. That's something very sad that I see teenagers leaving the local church. But it's so often about friendships, isn't it? Like, you know, there's so many of us moms and dads who say, but I try to get my kid to have healthy, great friendships. And it was either too small a group or it was, you know, they didn't welcome her. Uh, what, do you, what do you do when it's not ideal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those situations happen a lot. And I think the problem, I know even in my own life, is looking at the church with the wrong focus. So looking at the church as a place that it, it should be for me, it should be to ultimately uh, meet my perceived needs, find friends my own age. But that's not really the way the church was designed. The church was designed to be a group of people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different ages, and that they should be uniting together in Christ, and that should overcome those differences. So if we're not looking at the church as a place that's ultimately for us, but as a place where we can go to serve and to worship Christ with others, I think that would overcome that mindset. Okay, so it's not all about me, uh, but you, you do put in, this changes everything. You have got eight touch points that you think this is really foundational. I've got to get this right in my life as a young person. Um, let's talk first about identity. What do you mean by getting an identity clear? Every human being, I think, is looking for an identity. So there are these big universal questions that we're all asking, whether we know it or not. Questions like, who am I? Why am I here? How should I live? And I know in my own life, as a young person, that's really the time in my life when I'm most wrestling with these questions. I want to know how I should spend the rest of my life. And identity is at the heart of it. Identity is the thing that answers those questions. So where do you go? You look on Facebook? Do you look on Twitter? Where do you, where do you Instagram? Where do you find your identity? That's the temptation, for sure. But young people, we love social media, and we look for those things to validate us and affirm us. But my message is that that God's word is the only place that is where we're going to find that identity. Okay, that is so hard though because let's okay, and I know I'm doing a generation gap thing here <laughs> by saying I might look on Facebook to see how am I rating socially and you're saying no, look at the Bible. Yeah. Okay, how can that possibly be as oh. interesting back and forth? Oh, that sounds completely countercultural, and it sounds completely countercultural to my own heart because I'm tempted to go on Facebook because that's the place where I see all these real people, and these real people are going to uh, validate me. But God's word is the place that, that God has actually spoken to us and given us these truths that define us not just for this generation, uh, but that define us for all of life, that give us that significance that we crave so much and that really sets us on the path for our entire lives and, and forever. Do you have some guidelines you use for your social media consumption? Yes, yes. How do you manage it? <laughs> my parents were a big help in this. I, for one, did not get social media until later in my teen years. So Twitter, I think I was 16 and Facebook was actually 18, which I was the weird teenager because of that. Um, but I try to manage my time well on that in the giving myself limits in how much I check social media because 
Yeah, it's a big temptation. Now you're in the communications business, and it's all about exactly. How and you much get those traffic. apps on your yes. phone, man. Those notifications. That's difficult, but that's a big thing. And then putting safeguards, uh, like who I'm accepting friend requests from, just putting some limits and caps on my different accounts. That's been very helpful. So identity then is sourced not from what the world is talking about, but it's actually sourced. And some people only pick up the, the Bible and say, or they look for it on their phone, that it's too dense, it's too difficult to understand. Where do you begin? finding identity in the pages of the Bible. Yeah, I think it's all throughout, first of all. So there's not one text maybe uh, that we can say, that's the, the magical text that every person needs to start with. But I like to point people to the book of John, especially young people. That's really a whole book where John is trying to ask, who is Jesus? And if we answer that question, I think that's the key to answering, who am I? Wow, okay. The other point you put in there is uh, time. The use of our time is one of those fundamental building blocks that you as a teenager want to, to get a handle on. What have you learned about time? For sure. Time is a biggie because as young people we have a lot of free time. We do school and then we have usually quite a bit of extra time that we don't have other obligations to weigh us down. For me, I was really changed by this thought that, that Jonathan Edwards actually said that time is even more valuable than money. Because if you lose money, you can get it back. But if you lose time, you can't. So shifting my focus on time, realizing that uh, this is a finite thing. I, have, I, I actually don't have all the time in the world. So I need to be intentional about how I use my time. And that does not mean that I can't watch TV or I can't play video games, but that can't be all that I need to do. And so just thinking, uh, what can I do today to actually redeem this time? What are things that I can do to limit my time on worthless things and reach for something higher? Okay, Jaquel Crow, we're gonna be back. Just hang on tight there because we've got a few other of these basic essentials that change everything in a teenager's life. And uh, we'll be back with more with Jaquel after this. <laughs> 